Hey guys, welcome back to Mojo Grip Mike here. Today I am at the Oceana Air Show in Virginia Beach. And today we're going to check out the T-51. Stay tuned. Guys, if this bird reminds you of any other aircraft, you are not wrong. What you're looking at is a replica of a P-51 Mustang. And as you can see also with the color scheme here, uh, very, very similar. But if you look closer, actually let me back up a little bit. If you look closer, you realize that this is actually a smaller version of the P-51 Mustang. And for those of you who are asking, well, what the hell is a P-51 Mustang? Just look it up. Go and search it. P-51 Mustang is actually an iconic airplane in American history. Uh, these were aircraft that was used in the World War, Second World War, and they are iconic for different reasons. For one, speed, agility, I mean, just everything about the P-51 Mustang screams, fly me. Uh, obviously, those heroes who flew those birds back then, you know, they did a lot. And these airplanes came in handy uh, during the Second World War. But now, to get your hands on a P-51 Mustang, you're looking at a few million dollars. Uh, from what I know, those airplanes, you can probably find them for two to three million dollars. But guess what? If you don't have two to three million dollars, you can build one of these. Now, let me start the official review of the T-51. So guys, this is a 75% replica of the P-51 Mustang I just told you about. And if we go around it, I've mentioned the color scheme, and you see it has red tails. Red tail symbolizes the Tuskegee Airmen. If you uh, just look it up, just look up the Tuskegee Airmen in history. These were some of the first African Americans to serve and fly as pilots uh, during the war. And they did such an amazing job, you know, in flying these birds. But let's get back to the T-51. As you can see, this also is a retractable landing gear, just like the full-scale P-51 Mustang. And as you can see here, now I don't know the specific material these are built out of, but I'll leave some, uh, some numbers and some stats in the description. Be sure to check that. Okay, so here we are. It's got your landing light right there. And this particular airplane actually just came in yesterday. I was here when they were putting in the wings. Uh, they've been building it for the last couple of months. And it just came in. It's now fully registered. And this thing will fly. Uh, if the right pilot will get in the pilot seat, this thing will fly. You can see also, let's, let's look at the wings. Generally, aerobatic airplanes, which this aircraft can do, this, this aircraft can perform some aerobatics, you know, you have shorter wings, but when you look in respect to the actual body frame of this T-51, the wings, I wouldn't say they're short or too short, because they seem very fitting to the body frame itself. Now, if this didn't have a much longer body frame, you may say, well, it has shorter wings. Another thing you'll notice about the wings is they're, they're quite wide. And what this allows the airplane to do is, one, you can go pretty fast, and also you have a nice stall speed. These things only stall around 45 to 50 miles per hour, and you can go as fast as 190 miles per hour in them. Now, when you buy a kit, to build one of these, I believe the kit starts at around 65,000. Um, but then, depending on your power plant, which you can get several with these, um, depending on the power plant, your avionics, you're probably looking at about a hundred thousand dollars to spend on one of these. And as you can see here, it is a tail wheel. And I wouldn't say this is as docile as the original model, but you can do some pretty good stuff with this as well. So you've got your tail here, your elevators, your rudder, um, a lot of rivets. If you can see closer, you know, these are, these are rivets. And if you look all around the aircraft, it's a lot of rivets, a lot of riveting that you have to do with this airplane. Uh, and from what I've been told, the average time it would take you to build one of these 
1600 hours and so you can divide that into months years however much uh, but you're looking at 1600 hours to build one of these now the standard tanks I believe are 26 gallons and I mentioned the power plant earlier now if you look at these I'm not sure if these are just aesthetic or if they're functional because you can put different engines in these uh, generally you can have a road tax 100 horsepower engine but truly if you want the same sound quality or the same grunt you would get from a p51 mustang you probably want to go with something maybe more powerful or i know some people use car engines you can use a honda engine you can use a gm ls3 engine which i've covered also on this channel and also another thing you find unique with the t51 just like you have on the p51 mustang you see it's a four blitter propeller and this particular airplane you can register it as a light sport or special light sport or ELSA which is experimental light sport because it is an experimental now if you see on the body frame it tells you right here crew weight 200 pounds service this plane with grade 100 130 fuel if not available so your fuel actually would depend on the power plant in there. I know some Rotax or most Rotax engine you can use car gas to fuel them up. So and that's the same with this. Now the interior, what you see, and I'll get a shot of the interior for you in a little bit. What you see, just looking from the outside, you may think that this is a one seater, but you can actually put two people in here. Now I wouldn't bet on that, but you can. And I'll show you the interior in a little bit. So it is a two-seater airplane. Uh, and the sitting configuration is front and back. You've got a sliding canopy. So let me try and get in and show you guys the interior. Okay, guys, here we are in the interior. As you can see, it's a, it's a, it's a cozy cabin. Okay, and like I said, you do have a back seat. Now, you probably can throw a kid back there. I would not be sitting back there, no how. But really, this is really a one-seater if you look at it. Now, let's let's see what's, what they got in here, okay? So you have a simple panel. You've got your analog screen there. But you can see that this is also equipped with a, a glass Garmin avionics. This is a 3X touch. And you have a center stick. And I love this handle here. I've seen a few of these around. Uh, I might actually get one in my airplane whenever uh, we get started building it. Okay, so it's got a single middle stick. This here to the side, on the left side, is your throttle. Okay, so you just push, push and shove. Uh, your circuit breakers are to the right. You see there's not a lot of them. You can probably count, let's see, probably about 10. So you've got your circuit breakers, your electric switches there. Again, your avionics is right in front of you, uh, and you can do whatever you need to do within touch. Now, it is a tail dragger, so you're you're inclined a little bit, but not too far back. Like if I look at it from the top, so you're sitting inclined, but you're pretty straight up. And for somebody who may be shorter or taller, I don't think visibility will be a problem for you in this aircraft. And this right here. This is the first time I've seen one of these. I believe this is the the scroll to close in the canopy. I could be wrong, but that's what it looks like if you follow that chain. So that's your handle to just pull in your canopy. Again, it's a sliding canopy. Now, in terms of baggage, if you put another person in here, there's no room for baggage, but I would think that this space is better just for baggage and just one pilot flying this. And your rudder pedals are right there. I'm not sure if they are adjustable or not. But again, people or pilots of different sizes can probably fit well uh, flying one of these. And then you look, it's nothing fancy. You know, there's nothing fancy in here. This is just a bird that you use. You know, go have some fun and come back down. You see it right there? Those are your landing gear lights. So whenever your landing gear are down or up, you get green or red, whichever uh, light indication that you have there. Now, I don't know where the landing gear switch is. 
I'm not sure if it's any one of those, but those are your landing gear light indicator that will tell you what's going on down there. So guys, here is my review of the T51. Again, it's a, it's a three-quarter replica, or three-quarter scale of the original P51 Mustang. Again, these can be built for less than $100,000. The kits start at $65,000. And depending on your power plant and your avionics, you can have one of these for less than hundred grand. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, be sure to give a thumbs up. Okay, and if this is your first time, make sure you subscribe to Mojo Grip. Again, my name is Mike. Thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you on the next video.